Hello, I'm Rachel McTavish. 2021 is a year that will see the climate emergency back at the top of the global agenda. The world's eyes will turn towards Scotland in November for COP26, the biggest diplomatic conference in the country's history and the single most important meeting to address climate change the world has ever seen. Postponed from November 2020, the debate has been kept alive through COP26 cast, brought to you by the University of Edinburgh's Centre for Business, Climate Change and Sustainability. The series of programmes has already attracted 160,000 viewers with high levels of engagement from around the world. Guests have included senior global business leaders, campaigners, opinion formers and leading academics. With programmes planned throughout the year in the lead up to COP26, it's expected the community around COPcast will grow as a central point of information and debate for delegates. Here's a selection of contributions from the programmes. These incentives to reduce emissions are much too low in the United States and frankly around the world. And what we need immediately is a globally harmonized incentive to reduce emissions. It's very similar and analogous to what happened in the great financial crisis where we didn't price the risk in mortgages. And therefore, you know, we created too many risky mortgages sitting both on and off balance sheet. And that led to the financial crisis. Here, we're putting too much uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We're not pricing that risk. And so it's, it's uh, growing out of control. We can see that as a cost to a business. And we flip that around um, in the sense that sustainability and addressing climate change is an investment in a future thriving business. So it is a protection from downside risk, the risk that climate change will have on your business. But also it's an investment in the opportunities. And as Nicholas was talking about then, there are huge opportunities in future markets, in customer bases, uh, and in opening yourself up to the way in which economies are going to function in the future as we build back better and as we address the climate crisis and to avoid the catastrophic impacts. Yes, I think that's right. I, I'm actually quite hopeful. So certainly in the business community, there's been an absolute shift in uh, importance of, of sustainability. So even just a few years ago, kind of boards didn't have the, uh, uh, the topic of sustainability as, a, as an important agenda item. And yet now, um, virtually all organizations have, have embraced the need to, uh, to play their part and make, uh, and make significant commitments. The investment community um, is the, 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 um, the ESG uh, movement, environmental, social and governance movement is continuing to grow in importance and you're starting to see um, right across the globe so from from the us across europe and asia specialist funds who are investing in companies off the back of their esg or sustainability criteria so this isn't becoming optional this is uh, this is now firmly baked into the to the commercial business agenda well i, I guess transformation comes from all aspects of the business so start at the top if i look at the board of a company like ours i think this agenda was a compliance agenda a few years ago we're going into the board first strategy session on my watch next week so nine weeks in and the esg agenda is taking center stage it's the first thing we discuss it's going to be discussed it's got the longest session it's before the numbers before business development before all of that we're starting with esg and how it should shape our thinking so i think this this move from a compliance issue to the centre of the strategy and how we develop a sustainable business is, is a major change in, in thinking in the company. I think in terms of ESG, before COVID, the E was very much to the fore and, and, and gaining huge, huge traction. Um, I think what COVID did was actually dial up the S and the G, you know, so so looking at how businesses behaved during the, the, the COVID uh, uh, period, uh, companies really having a sense that they were going to be judged tomorrow by what they do today. Um, and then just extraordinary behaviors like, like collaboration between um, competitors to, to, you know, to come up with, with to, to deal with issues that are for the common good. And I think, and what I hope, is that some of those learnings sort of transfer across to let's, what's hope, let's hope is a, is a post-COVID period. So that again, that collaboration on some of these really complex topics around climate um, rather than a kind of competitive uh, piece.
Alistair, I'd be interested to get your opinion on this. Keith Anderson from Scottish Power, who I'm sure you know very well, has said that ministers seeking a green recovery from the pandemic shouldn't be distracted by technologies such as carbon capture and hydrogen that are years from general use and said um, instead the government should electrify the hell out of everything right now. What's your view on that? Well, it sounds like an electrifying uh, possibility. Um, no, look, as an electric, uh, as an electricity-based company, um, w we would also agree with the sentiment of uh, electrifying things now is definitely how we start this. Uh, I, but I, I, I'm also firmly of the belief that carbon capture and storage and particularly hydrogen have a very important role to play um, in how we get there. Uh, and and I, I think Chris and other people here have, have mentioned how we need to do a variety of things and it's doing all those things in parallel so electricity and renewable electricity we're in a great place at the moment um there's there's nobody there's nobody building more offshore wind in the world at the moment than sse um we've got uh, we've got the world's largest uh, offshore wind farm and we've got um, scotland's nearest and deepest offshore wind farm um coming at at, uh, at, at sea green as well there's a lot of change to come and therefore looking at developing these other technologies is important. So um, for me, uh, as, as I've said, we should definitely be looking at building um, uh, flexible thermal generation um, that can provide uh, flexibility when the sun and the wind isn't blowing um, so much. Uh, so, and, and that can happen during the course of this decade uh, and into the next one to replace existing plants as, co as coal completely closes. Uh, and, and some of the older low efficiency gas comes off. We recognise that in the 21st century, the success of a country does not amount to how big its GDP is. The success of a country is whether the economic system delivers for people and planet. And so at its most basic, we all is really about supporting and increasing the impact of all that amazing work through collaboration. And hence, when it comes down to the, the acronym of we all, that is not just our title, it's our way of working as well. Scotland has uh, has been very excited by this, as has Glasgow, and, and we, we've identified some some important themes that we hope uh, the COP will actually uh, identify and make progress on. Um, what, one of those um, uh, is, is, is about well-being um, and uh, particularly in the context of climate change just transition, uh, which we haven't spoken about yet because the, the just transition um, idea, the, the, the principles of just transition, the just transition commission, Scotland is kind of ahead of just about everybody else in uh, embedding this into our entire approach to climate change. And we are hoping to really promote that whole uh, proposal, but not just transition within Scotland. And this picks up on what Catherine said, because it's a recognition that the just transition has to be global as well. So we want to advocate very much for the global south being properly heard uh, at COP26 in Glasgow uh, next year. It's one thing wanting to do infrastructure and provide much needed infrastructure uh, for Africa, which has to be, but it's another thing to insist that it's done in a sustainable manner. And while there would not be a total departure from, entire departure from fossil fuels, we push a cleaner method because quite frankly, the person who doesn't have light doesn't care where it comes from. Is not very much interested in making sure it's renewable, just wants electricity just wants the basic infrastructure. So if we take a nuanced approach in providing that infrastructure with sustainability as the focal, it will go a long way to positioning Africa as uh, one of the leading uh, climate narrative uh, experts. I just wonder whether we need a much more straightforward uh, key decision from leading governments, which are going to say, I hope at COP26, well, we're just going to need to take a straight climate swipe on the resources of the profit-making world to take a really big swipe because we've got to put it through agencies whether it is uh, in com combination with cdc or the africa development bank put it through the agencies which are committed to the infrastructure development to the climate response needs and are going to do the work and of course would, would the world sit up and say that no come on that is unjust inappropriate unfair no the clock is ticking We've all watched disaster around us, whether it's the burnings in Australia or the burnings in California and the storms that are taking place right now in the Caribbean and across 
the edges of the American coast. We, we, we don't need to be persuaded. We just need the money to ta be taken and invested to make the real difference. So instead of perhaps talking about climate change, let's talk about the job opportunities there is in shifting a uh, kind of building stock into a more sustainable building stock or or uh, shifting the transport system and, and helping people to, to get quicker to work through public uh, uh, transportation means. I'm not too keen on politicizing climate change too much. If you look at, at uh, who are the, the individuals in society that uh, actually produce most of the emissions, it's the wealthiest 10%. The wealthiest 10% uh, produce 50% of all emissions. So actually, it's not, you don't need to have policies in place for all of the people. And so we could come up with those policies that actually affect the people that can afford it and that uh, that cause most of the emissions. Uh, we, we would welcome support from the rest of the world, but we are not waiting for that to happen. And that's true for almost all vulnerable countries. They are having to face the impacts of climate change, whether they like it or not. In fact, it's not just poor countries anymore. It's rich countries as well. Wildfires in the US and hurricanes right now, in fact, in the, in the Caribbean, there's the 29th hurricane of this year hitting the countries of Honduras and Nicaragua. In my country, Bangladesh, where I'm speaking from, we were hit by a super cyclone, Amphan, just a few months ago, and that was followed by a major flood. So the impacts of climate change are happening as we speak. They're going to get worse uh, in future. Every country you know, has its own right answer in terms of how it makes this transition. And um, for you know a developed economy like the UK, where um, we've already taken some of the tough decisions in the power sector, for example. We'll be looking to, you know, the next key sectors where we need to look for important, um, you know, bold leadership measures to um, to trigger the kind of mitigation we'll need for an ambitious 2030 target. I think ultimately the COP is about creating a, a powerful political and economic signal which shows the world that, you know, change is happening, it's accelerating, it's irreversible, and it's, um, you know, completely essential. Um, and you do that through a number of different ways. And the COP has a kind of showcase coming together moment for real economy actors to um, deliver on commitments, make further commitments, showcase uh, excellence, share experiences, I think is um, you know, totally within the model that we would hope to run. So look, it's it's a balance. And I think we will be hoping to run a COP that allows us to make progress across that full range of different outcomes. It's your chance to be involved and stay briefed on the individuals and ideas that will inform and influence COP26. Stay ahead of the debate and be prepared for the year ahead with COP26 Cast.